We're now broadcasting live at Speaker's Corner in High Park in London. Just do a quick walk around, uh, see if there are any good speakers about. Welcome to the stream. Huh? You don't believe that? I know that. But how can it be a cross? How can it be to be died? Welcome to the stream. Hope you're all well. This is what they did. Don't, yeah. I, I mean, a story I, I can tell you. In the Holocaust, yes. in the Holocaust, my father was telling me that uh, there was two queues. Mm. One was full of sick people, yes. and, the other, and he was on the sick people, like thin, you know, very, very thin. But the Germans always needed, always needed uh, uh, you know, workers. And uh, he was on the um, he was on the thing queue, and uh, he managed to survive by. It's a lot complicated story to explain, but he managed to survive by recognizing what he had to do, which was to uh, escape that that uh, queue. So I think there's a very similar philosophy going on now with the NHS. Well, it's obviously the government doesn't want people. As many people in the, in in, in the, you know in the UK, I'm talking about the UK. I don't know about other countries, but it's in the government's interest that people are deprived uh, getting the treatments that they require. And this is a very sad reality, and we're all affected by it. Uh, people who are in vulnerable uh, conditions are obviously going to uh, have a much harder time. So the thing to do is get away with a successful bank robbery. Uh, put all the money away just in case you require some private health care. What are your well, thoughts? We are going that way, like America. Yeah. What are your thoughts on yesterday and um, the turnout there? Well, I wasn't on the protest. I did see some video of it. I actually saw you on the. Uh, you, you're quite a good-looking man on, uh, on, on on film. Thank you. Uh, even better than in real life, actually. I don't know how you managed to do that. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, the only thing I would say, even though I understand the protest was a little bit smaller than previous ones, they're very, very important. And I am of the opinion that the government narrative is uh, slowly falling apart. Uh, more and more whistleblowers are coming out. More and more people are becoming disillusioned. Uh, people are becoming sicker, and uh, I, I'm of the view that uh, they're not going to be able to get away with it forever. You know, it's all going to be everything's going to be revealed uh, eventually. Uh, it will be denied, and what will, there will be uh, scapegoats. There will be. I, I'm, I'm just assuming there will be people like Matt Hancock, as an example, who might be. An escape goat, you know, for uh, advising people uh, to uh, take the, you know, boosters and what have you. But I, I, I am of the view that it is slowly. It just feels like that, and it didn't feel like that a while back. But you know, you can see what's going on in many, many parts of the world. This desperation, this urgency, this. Um, manipulation. For example, in Australia, you know, the construction workers, uh, three the, the police have murdered three construction workers. I don't know if you were aware of that. Uh, rubber bullets. Yeah. From a protest? Yes. What actually happened? I got this first hand information from my sister, but it, even though you don't read about it in the main media, it is circulating amongst the, you know, the uh, uh, construction workers and other um, Australian people. Uh, you know, perspective, perception is changing and uh, what's going to happen uh, 
is there's going to be huge retaliation if it hasn't already happened. So what, just to give you a quick um, example of what went, went, went on, uh, there was a protest uh, because uh, they were blackmailed. If you don't take the jib jab, don't expect to go back to work. That, that's what was said. Okay? And um, these are like big rugby men, really big, big, big guys. They weren't going, so they went on the street and peacefully protested. How many were there, roughly? I don't know, but in the thousands. I mean, yeah. not, you know, in the thousands, as, yeah. as I understand it. And what happened was uh, the police uh, chose to eventually use rubber bullets on their own people. I mean, this is just incredible what happened. And uh, as a result of the rubber bullets, in that protest, one person died of his injuries. And then there was, uh, as I understand it, uh, a tall building where the police confronted two other protest, construction worker protests. And what happened is they, they, they were either going to get bullets or jump off the building. They chose to jump off the building and they both died. So what you actually have, you have a situation where the police in Australia, I believe it was Melbourne, have murdered three citizens. Now how can you, how, I mean, if that happened, let's say that happened to any one of us, you know, or our families, would we not seek retaliation? Would we just, you know, do nothing? So. What the media are doing, um, they, they have been sadly supporting the government and they have um, reported that uh, there's a lot of right-wing associates, you know, marching with the, the, these people. So what they're doing is the usual thing. Do you they're think they're putting to... people off? Um, do you think they're putting people off who don't normally go to protests by calling us right-wingers or whatever? Well, what they're, they're, they're doing, you know, you've, you've got different media people but the reason why sorry it's not exactly answering your question but the reason why I think things will change is because some of the media people got injured as well so the, the police ignored the fact that they had press you know quite I think on their helmets actually or on their bags it didn't make any difference and I think um, there was a general concern amongst the police that they're being filmed doing terrible things to to people so as a result of that I think that those media people potentially would change track so as opposed to just covering unbiasedly the protests what I think is likely to happen is something very very extraordinary so that they will completely change their philosophy so it's a short they're, they're witnessing firsthand if they're a victim themselves I mean, they can't really lie, can they? They've got to, they've got to reveal what's happened. So it's a sort of shift, maybe, in the media because they're getting. Uh, well, the we, we have to acknowledge the censorship problems as well. You know, there's a. Uh, I mean, those that think that Australia is still a modern democracy are totally wrong. You know, it is a far cry from what it used to be, and we we are going that way ourselves. I mean, unless we actually protest it and that's why I think it's very important for people to continue to go on these protests as opposed to large protests in London which is what we have had traditionally it does seem to be that there's protests in Manchester and Liverpool and you know little small protests there's a, a lot of protests outside schools now yeah. uh, where you know they're, 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 they're actually saying to the communicating to the parents do you think this is a good idea? But of course, we all know the parents have the right to influence. They have, they, they, well, they, they, they can advise their children, but they cannot uh, go against their children's decision. So what we're saying here is that a child of 12 who would be forbidden to vote have sexual relations or um, drink, for example, would be allowed to instantly make a decision put in some by many as unsafe. Not only that, uh, they don't need it. Uh, we all, that, that is well established because um, 
children are resilient to. Um, you know how we're doing these protests. Yeah. Uh, in the UK, it appears, yes, we do have um, a degree of freedom, uh, largely compared to Australia. Shouldn't we be protesting outside the Australian Embassy, for example, yeah. in solidarity with Australia? Um, it's a good idea. If you want to start it up, I'm sure you'll get a huge amount of support. I should point out that the Tibetans have protested for years outside the Chinese Embassy. Uh, it's quite provocative, I would have thought. But on the other hand, they're still doing it years and years and years afterwards. And to the best of my knowledge, the Chinese government are uh, acting more atrociously all the time. They, 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 you know, they want to be the superpower, and in order to achieve that, they are prepared to do anything that uh, to, to achieve that. And we allow it by, of course, doing business with them. I'm, I'm totally against the idea of doing business, as, as I say that to very elegant Chinese ladies of walking past. Um, you think Chinese would invent Australia? Um, after Taiwan? I, 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 I'm not an expert in that field. All I'm saying is that it's very dangerous to allow any, any uh, country to become a superpower. And we are going the wrong way because, you know, the best thing we could do is try somehow or other to communicate. And it's not impossible for, hard, you know, big enemies to actually love each other in a way. For example, as an example, South Africa, as you know, was, I'm not saying it's a good country now, there's a lot of problems in South Africa, huge corruption, but the apartheid has kind of disappeared. I mean, when I was there in 1989, I believe it was the remnants of, um, uh, you know, uh, black beaches, white beaches, there was mixed beaches, there was a lot of complaints about it, it was mixed buses, but it was, you know, I think 1988, that would be unheard of, if you understand what I mean. So, you know, one can make progress with communication. Uh, unfortunately, people think they're gonna last forever. People like power. Um, I mean, I was talking, I, I having a conversation this morning with the, this young lady about power. Even in relationships, that the man wants the power of the woman, women want a man Yes, yes. <laughs> you look nice like real. You look like real men. Vince, <laughs> that you. But I. I, I am. You are. Yeah. I, I'm. So get a message across. I've always believed that. And I learned that, that was something I learned as a teenager from the late Lord Soper, because I've been speaking here uh, a long time. And when I first spoke here, I was uh, young enough to be your children, or uh, your child. Now I'm old enough to be the father of some of you, and some of you look familiar, obviously, not everybody, but... Um, Me? The, no, not you, <laughs> sir, not you, sir. Not you, sir. I mean, you might be attractive in your own community, but not um, everywhere. To be honest with you, okay, I just like to be honest. But um, uh, it's great. Look, we can have a little laughter. We can have a little smile. We can have a little dis disagreement here, and that—that's the beauty of the tradition of Speakers' Corner, uh, a place where one could, has always been able to to participate in democratic dialogue. Unfortunately, it's not quite the place 
Uh, now, is it? I don't know if any of you have seen uh, that area of the park. It's primarily men. Uh, women feel some somewhat intimidated not coming to my meeting because I uh, treat you respectfully and, uh, you know, I, I understand... Uh, but there's that, no woman here as well, really. I'm sorry? There's no woman here and you're... Uh, no, the there's no women standing near you. <laughs> but it's okay, you don't need a woman. You've got a, you? you've, got a hot, you've got a bottle or something for comfort, as you can see. Um, yeah. What well, makes you come to Speaker's Corner and how long? Well, have I was you been saying this to for? myself. I was saying this to myself in my own mind. Why do I come to Speaker's Corner? Because it's certainly different from how we used to know it. And I used to be always regarded as the more entertaining speakers here, which I would like to think that I still am. But of course, um, I, I do have a message, and the message is one of opposing oppression, uh, shouting for freedom. And when you hear in the media uh, that these uh, people who go on the protest are maniacs, are extremists, uh, this is far from true. The real extremists and the real maniacs are the ones who are following what the government is telling you. And you should know now not to listen to them I was telling people Brexit was a bad idea here. And look how correct you uh, can travel. I, you know, I mean, uh, it, it has interrupted so many relationships. People yeah. have got relatives ab yeah. abroad, partners abroad, and they haven't been uh, able to see them. It's destroyed so many relationships. It's created uh, disharmony w within people. It's, uh, it's been responsible for a lot of uh, suicides and domestic violence and and uh, animal violence you know we cannot trivialize these things and we need to protest as hard as we can and uh, we need speaker's corner which uh, as some of you know the police tried to stop last year and they did succeed in stopping it for a bit so it's good that that we are back again but and and all in the name of a so-called uh, well, we, we, you know, the jib jab crisis. You're looking at the censorship and your, your machine there. But uh, um, uh, the healthiest thing you can do, my, my sister has been locked down in a... The lockdown is going to continue until, the 20, uh, until November. The healthiest thing... The fresh... If you are indoors, you are going to be sick. You need this, the healthiest thing you can do. You don't need a Matt Hancock or any other minister or a Boris Johnson. You need Martin in this crazy shirt and his good looks and uh, the, the virtuous comments that I'm making to, to give the, the honest message. Confide in me. Make me your leader, ladies I don't, and gentlemen. I don't, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it's virtuous, but I tell you what I do agree with you on, uh -huh. definitely, with, and it's a, it, it resonates with me 100%. Yeah. It's this thing about protest. Now, yeah. I protest about several issues in London. I always have, yeah. okay? And I have several causes which are dear to my heart, but which I won't go through here. Right. It's not the point. And there's no question about it. What people forget, protesters are vilified now generally. They're looked upon, they're ostracized. Yeah. Yeah. Even within my own friendship groups, yeah. they'll say, where were you today? Oh, I was in a pro-Palestinian rally in London. Yeah. And they go, really? What, what are you doing that sort of thing for at your age? You know, this is what I get, right? Um, I'm, I'm with them, by the way. Right, but okay, fine. And, 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 and this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and what people don't realize is, is that this country was built on protest. Yes, All our was. major yeah. social advances yeah. were with whether it be within education, women's right, universal suffrage, they were all hard earned by protest. Exactly. And and we're not allowed to do it now. I don't know if I'm a big I, I read a lot of Chomsky, Noam Chomsky and um, and his big book Manufacturing Consent. I don't know if anybody's ever read it. But but basically what he says is and he basically says is that what's on the table for everybody is essentially that. Yeah and you've got the whole world to think about, yeah. to contribute to, but we're not doing that. We are given parameters now within which we must operate 
and, and look at politics. Look at the Labour Party now, look at the Conservative Party now. There isn't really that much between no, there's no, them. There's hardly you know, anything at you know, all. I, and, I, and that's yeah. it. And, and that, yeah. this is all part of it. Yeah. I, I just want to uh, come back to you, uh, if I may. Yeah. Um, I'm of the view, and I think others are of the view, that the Extinction Rebellion protests, the havoc that's been uh, uh, created on the motorways in the last weeks, was engineered not by any of these protesters, but by uh, certain people in the administration, in the government, uh, because they have a, this, this agenda to uh, get public on their side against protesters. Of course, we know that they're trying to uh, get uh, th this in, into uh, law, the, the criminal justice yeah. bill, which will mean that we will have the very minimum of ability to protest. You'll get on, it. On, You'll you, get it. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's very, very clever psychology. Everything's about psychology, and it's very, very easy to manipulate people. And uh, you know, for example, I, I would imagine if you was uh, not as bright as you are, you're fairly bright, most of you people. That's because you've been listening to me, and I've helped you in your <laughs> development. But uh, thank you. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Uh, but the truth, the truth is that uh, if you were on the M5 and you wanted to get somewhere and you've got all these people glued to the road and so on, your immediate thoughts is, those fucking bastards, why doesn't the government introduce a law to stop it, you know? Yeah. But the truth is, it is the government that have organized it. No one's gonna go to prison, trust me. I know they said that they will, but they won't go to prison, but they've already created, I believe, a law that says that you can go to prison for one year or two years if you are uh, uh, going to re be a, a, a repeat offender. Um, but that's all to do with using such a law against people who go on freedom marches, for example. Yeah. They don't want it because it's very, very anti-government. And you know, the truth is, they are all going to be exposed. This is what you know, nobody's really thinking about at the moment. The people who read the, the newspapers and the sun and believes all this crap that they're telling us and you know, the, the ones who are refusing the jib jab are nutters and responsible for all the and, and, and so on. You know, it's all going to be exposed what is really, really happening. And I find myself uh, uh, it's in contrast to how I was thinking last year. I wasn't thinking like I'm thinking now, last year. I have changed because I have done my research. I have listened and I've weighed up everybody's point of view. This is really important that we all keep an open mind. And I've got friends, most of my friends, totally disagree with me. Well, they, they disagree with me, but you know, I've noticed that even they, generally speaking, are kind of toning down their opposition to my opinions because they're thinking, well, maybe he's got a point. You know, it hasn't worked out quite like we thought. And of course, when it comes to the fact that they're now, uh, that, that you, you know, they told you that it was just a two week uh, issue and then everything would be repaired. I mean people believe that but that's not the case. Slowly, strategically we are all being drawn in to something very dark and very evil going on and it's not easy if you have all your life been a trusting person but there are people out there who are evil and you know, if you don't believe it, I, I'm, I know I'm not gonna win so many friends over with this statement, what I'm gonna make now. I don't care. I'm a vegetarian, right? But even if I was a meat eater, if you were a meat eater and you were to see the contempt and the disgust at the way that animals are treated in the slaughter yard, you might think twice if you uh, like animals at all and you have any compassion and sensitivity you might think twice about eating meat. The point that I'm trying to make, really, is that the very fact that slaughtermen are prepared 
and uh, I've seen it over and over again with the videos in the pig in the, you know in the pig farms they they the people who work there they kick the pigs they beat them, they put cigarette, uh, lighted cigarettes on them. Was that famous yeah, 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 this is really disgusting stuff. Yeah. And the very fact that people can do that reveals to me that people are not necessarily nice or your friends. And uh, so we don't need to go back to the Nazis. We can see other horrible catastrophes that are happening. And what I'm saying to you people, even though it's mental to believe this, is there are really horrible, evil, dark people who don't care about any one of you people here. And that's why we've all got to fend it's, it's for called, ourselves. It's we've the all government. got to fend the for ourselves, it's ladies and gentlemen. Do you think this is also a spiritual battle as well? Yes, uh, it is a spiritual battle. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I think it's got to... We can only achieve anything by... Uh, uniting together spiritually regardless of your religion this is bullshit what's going on, uh, on over there the christians and the muslims arguing with each other do you think that's causing the main division the main issue well it, 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 it's irrelevant they both claim to believe in god they, you know if god is going to encourage people to hurt each other that's not a good thing is it if god is going to encourage you to love each other and to be tolerant of each other of your religious or political differences that is a positive thing i mean if you disagree tell me but, but martin why is it always muslims and christians no jews in, in the <laughs> we're why? not involved uh, I, yes he, he wants to so? point out he wants to point out that i'm jewish but you know but, 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 look, look. we have a good uh, big community well, well I, I i'm going i'm going i'm i'm, 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 I'm I'm going, to, I, I'm going to no, no, I'm explain it to you. This, this, this. Look, the Jews, the Jews are a very yeah. small minority, especially... No, it's about what, 100 to 200,000? Yeah, yeah, but we, we, big... we, we are a very, very small minority in the UK. And, uh, you know, when you say the Jews, you are suggesting by that statement that Jews are united... By the way, I love Jews. No, Only no, Jews, but yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But I just want to, re I just want to uh, say this to you, my friend, that the Jews are not united in their thoughts, especially religiously. They are not. I mean, there's a huge difference between, so Muslims, between let's say, the Orthodox the Jews and, uh, you know, more moderate Jews like myself. So, you know, there's a huge difference. We, we, you know, the, the, the extreme, the, the uh, sorry, the um, Orthodox Jews will have, um, they will go out two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning with their children. I mean, I don't yeah, understand yeah. that to go out and eat. Yeah, yeah. I can't relate to that, you know. I had to be in bed at eight o'clock when I was a child, so can't relate to any of that. So, you know, and I, I think also in the Muslim faith, I mean, I've seen them arguing over there as well, the secular Muslims and more fanatical Muslims. So, you know, uh, but uh, look, at the end of the day, we are as we are, we think as we do, mainly because of the various influences that have been in our lives, yeah? Um, but I would like to think the best thing to do even if you've had religious teaching and influence, the best thing you can do really is to distance yourself from all that and ask the questions yourself unbiasedly. Uh, you know, try to, try to keep a, a receptive mind. That's the best thing you can do. Hello, that's the lady who, who likes me actually. Boring you. <laughs> I know that you like me because you are regular. You come here to get encouraging what happened to other speakers all we have is uh, like religious people what I did happened? I did mention something about this earlier on it's um, unfortunate that there are not more entertaining more rented yes you're correct yeah, you're more... correct you're correct um, you know back in the day there was eccentrics here there was great orators like Lord yeah, Sofa yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. The, these died, were well a lot he was 96 he did yes yeah, a yeah, long yeah, time, time yeah. he, he spoke right up to the end he was yeah. a great speaker right, well, yeah. um, you know, the, Tony Ben, you had Tony Ben here. Uh, yes, uh, there were some great speakers. The only good speaker left now is myself. There's nobody else. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, what you get from yes, me yeah. is the politics yes. and the Everything. entertainment All in and one. the sex appeal. All in one. All of these. <laughs> I don't laugh because that's patronizing, by the way, madam. Patronizing me, yes. When I say I'm handsome, you're meant to yes. say yes. Say here and here. Well, all I can say is I hope your sex life is... <laughs>
Do you know what? Now that feels bad. No, hang on. So temporarily, I think the Islamic philosophy is right. Don't allow women. Okay. and it puts us in a very difficult vulnerable situation do you see that this is what education has done they educate it and then they insult you suppress education. them i was mostly Yeah. Yeah. I think what he's trying to do is trying to bring some spice in your meeting. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to spice up your meeting. Did you have Danny Shine's calling? Oh, sorry, what was that? Did you have Danny Shine's calling? I don't know. I, I've got his number. Yeah. I don't know. Um, anyway, it's lovely to see you. We've had, uh, we've been, how long? We've been here about 20 minutes. Half an hour. Half an hour, yeah. half an hour. What have we, I've achieved a bit. I think I've achieved in this time more than Boris Johnson's <laughs> achieved in his whole term of office, to be honest with you. Uh, I do my best. Because um, I genuinely, look, I, I don't like everybody, obviously, but I'm not going to declare war on people I dislike. I would like to see a society where we all try to live together harmoniously. I also would like to see a society where we didn't eat meat, but we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we, are, um, right. well we are going that way. Uh, yeah, you can you see that in the supermarkets, the plant-based <laughs> foods everywhere. Um, and this is, uh, it could be argued Bill Gates is behind this. Because of, we don't, we know that um, uh, eating meat is not sustainable. So you've got to learn not to do it anymore. Um, yeah. So uh, in that way, we're probably going the right direction. In other ways, we're going in the wrong direction. I would like to see people uniting together. People, you know, if you remember John Lennon and Yoko Ono, the bed sit is before most of your time, isn't it? When was that? 1970. Was it 1970? Well, they did a sit-in all night long. I believe that was against the Vietnam War originally. Uh, it, it, was, it was designed to make people aware that peace should have a chance. And their famous song was Give Peace a Chance. Do you remember that song? Yes. Give Peace a Chance. And so, you know, it, it was a genuine message and it was a very good message. And it's something that I wish I, would, I, I could do and, and, and do it publicly, actually. I would, maybe we could do it, you and I. What, <laughs> surprise? You the what, surprise sing the song? No, we go in the bed, oh, no. a large oh, bed, oh, no. and we do a sitting. Oh, no, they were, they were on Why do you always have naked. to talk that way? Naked. I'm going to stop they... coming. I'm not saying, madam, in the bed. You should see the comments. And then what? Do a pillow. You should see. I remember when, what? you know, in the 80s, they had the biggest audience. What's that? In the 80s. Remember in the 80s? I, I, what did they say? You're going to have to do yeah, it. No, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You tell me off. Yeah, yeah, the biggest audience. Yeah, yeah OK. Biggest. You can have a, uh, uh, they had the biggest audience. No, no. I remember Roy, the a guy called Roy Sauer had a bigger audience than Martin. No, no, no. How many people? I'm not worried. I'm not, I'm, got, I'm, got excuse me. I'm not, uh, I'm not in a competition uh, to get well, the to biggest audience. Well, to be fair, you have like 80 people on here. So Sorry? You have like 80 people on here. There's 80 people there. It's not bad. 80 and oh, 20 wow. is 100. You start to be two in here, remember? I got 100 yeah. people. I subscribe to your channel. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 But I reached the hours now. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, guys. I'm the speaker. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Look, this man, this man there with the book is trying to get a bed sit in. He's trying to repeat. See what's going on there? You see? This is what they, this is what desperate men do. <laughs> I want to get in there! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. Of course, of course. Well, I think it's a it's just no time. I don't know, somehow I've lost the uh, attention. I don't know. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't. I don't deserve to lose the yeah. I do, I do, but I, I chose not to get it. We're going to have to shoot him. Yeah. We're going to have to. Uh, uh, yeah, we are going busy. You're coming. I'm going to come.
So what's going on now? Is legal. I, I don't know what I said. No, I don't know what I said. 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 I don't know well, in this case, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's the, the algorithm. The algorithm yeah. is the more you have, the more yeah. push you. Oh, yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah, we could speak. Uh, yeah, uh, we could speak. Where's that every week? Just do a quick walk around. Does the devil believe in the oneness of God? So is the devil a The devil believes in the oneness of God. So the devil believes the the So the devil in the So the the issue that with what you've got is that, firstly, belief in one God ain't all that. That's the reality. Because even, even the devil believes in one God. One second. Even the devil believes in one God and he is still going to hell. There are many monotheists who, according to your belief or my belief, are going to hell. So belief in one God ain't all that. There's something more important than belief in one God. But the other problem, the other problem, what's more important is, is submission to his will. That's more important. But that's, but that's more important than belief in one God. So, no, 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 they don't. No, they don't. But, 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 Allah says in his holy book that nothing happens except that he wills it. So if someone doesn't believe in Allah, that okay, is Allah's will. Know, knowing your life streams, brother. Is, would he be right Did you see the one yesterday? Yeah, yeah the protest. Yeah, yeah, very good. I'm not well questioning Yahweh. I'm questioning the soft puppet of Muhammad. Yeah, so let me ask you this question. If Allah compels you to do something, is it right that he punishes you for doing it? We thought it was going to kick off. Yeah. No, no, and then, uh, you're running away. Yeah. You're running away. You're running away. But you're running away from the problem in your religion. If a king, if this government forced you to do X, but then sent you to prison for doing X, would that be an unjust or an unjust government? Yeah, there's a lot, lot of people in there. Do you understand yeah, the question? I understand that, right? You understand the question. So, did you understand? He understood the question. So, let's ask it again. If a government forces you to do X, but then because you did X, sent you to prison, would that government be just or unjust? Unjust. So, if Allah forces you to do something and then punishes you, and then punishes you for doing it, is that just? You're hating. You're hating. Do you understand the problem? Do you understand the problem? Answer the question. You're not answering his question. You're to the kingdom of God. It's an analogy. Answer my question. We don't know about the station. Exactly. So here's the image that you're... But this is the problem. Here is the image, and I'm going to explain why it's a problem. I'm going to explain. I'm not questioning my God, I'm questioning your God. And your book invites me to do so. Your book says, listen to what the Quran says. Firstly, when it says the Quran is being reserved, it says, hey, he that thou may have mercy. Secondly, it says in the Quran that if they, meaning the people of the book, 
uh, were to find, if they were to examine this book, and if it were from any other than Allah, they would find contradictions in it. So the Quran invites me to find contradictions in it, and the, uh, with the belief that I won't be able to. Right. So you've just condemned, you've just condemned a government for making you do X and then punishing you for doing X, but you believe that Allah makes you do X, but then will punish you for doing X. That's what you've just said. Right, does, is, does anything happen outside of Allah's will? No. So if I, if I don't believe in Allah, is that because it's Allah's will that I don't believe? This is like the deepest law. Yeah. There's a guy in the middle of a jungle. Yeah. And all his life, he's lived in the jungle. And yeah. when he dies, God will send him to the hellfire. Why? Because God says to him, Didn't you reflect on servant of mine? Yeah. Upon who made the sky? Yeah. Upon who made the ocean? Yeah. Upon who made this creation? Yeah. Didn't you reflect upon who had the creator of it? Yeah. So, in other words, the main, main thing for us is to reflect. And if you don't reflect, then you do. Understand? Yeah, but you haven't actually answered the question. That's, that's what I'm God has given natural intellect. Right, so let's... God has given natural no, intellect. the question is, I believe you, I have a natural intellect. I'm convinced I have a natural intellect. So, so my point to you is, the Quran states that nothing happens except by the will of Allah, that he opens the chest of whom he wills to accept Islam, and he closes the chest of whom he wills to accept Islam, that he shrouds, he puts a cloak over their sight though, so that they cannot see. This is what's in the Quran, isn't it? Right, so I'm not lying about the Quran. So that means that if I don't believe in Allah, it's because of Allah's will. Is that true? So it's not because of Allah's will. Let's ask the question another way. Everyone can see you equivocating. Right? Everyone can see you equivocating. But let's ask the question in another way. Is there something that can happen independent of Allah's will? No. Right, so if Allah makes you do something and then punishes you for it, I say to you that that God is a fickle, unjust God. That the God of the Quran is fickle and unjust. And you accept that because if a government behaved like Allah, you would condemn the government. Do you believe to be in the mind, yeah? Do you believe to be in the mind? You believe that the Almighty is you're trying to change the topic. I'm not changing the topic. You're trying to change the topic. It's always about the Quran. But you people believe in something you're not worth it. And you're trying to change the topic. You're trying to get off the topic. Everyone will watch you trying to get off the topic. That's not what we're talking about. 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 You know what? You guys are the people who are the people who are the people who are the people who are the and you know what, I'll tell you something else, Allah says in the Quran that they try to make things from the Quran but they fail to do so, Allah's life will prevail there, there is apostasy happening across the world of Islam right now apostasy happening, it's happening in Somalia, it's happening in Iran, it's happening in Indonesia it's happening in Saudi Arabia, it's happening in Egypt it's happening in Egypt Here's why you're running away. Here's why you're running away. You're running away from the topic and everyone can see you running away from the topic. You're talking to me and when you try to talk to other people, you're running away. And when you try to change the topic, you're running away. Four years, bro. I tried to bring bring some. Yeah. I think it makes makes a lot, a lot, of, a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's really useful. So, so if you have a thousand, you can give them a lot of feedback. Let me explain that. Especially at these like big watches. Here's your opportunity. Even here, anyway. Here's your opportunity. Yeah, it's not like this. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about it. But sometimes I have to like show my phone. In it's a bit like oh, the will of Allah is supreme. Allah does what He wants because His sovereignty is over everything. But in the Christian faith, God does that which is good because God Himself is good, and so He only wills the good. 
Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference? Yeah? So in our faith, God wills the good because He is good. In your faith, God wills what He wants because God is all sovereign. And that is a fundamental difference between the God of Christianity and the God of Islam. Your God is a fickle, unjust God. And he, your God is a fickle, unjust God. And you agree with me? And, and you were agree with me? You would condemn a government. Would you condemn a government if the government passed laws to make people do good things? Every son, every No, we wouldn't. But if God, if a government passed laws to make you do something and then punished you for doing it, that's injustice. Agreed? Agreed? See, everybody agrees. Except. And you agreed with me. When I talked about the government, you said yes, that would be unjust. Ah, okay. So the only difference is yeah. that I use the word government rather than God. So when I replaced Allah with the word government, he agreed that that was unjust. But then when I put Allah back into the sentence, what happens? then he said, oh no, Allah does what he wants. No, 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 no. Uh, we hear and we <laughs> obey. It's the difference between Muslims and Christians. We listen and we obey. We don't go further and question it. You don't you know answer. anything about you the Christian faith? Tell, tell, what, you don't know anything about the Christian faith? You, you don't know anything about the Christian faith? Tell me what the Christian faith is. Tell me what the Christian faith is. Tell me what the Christian faith is. That's not a sufficient explanation. Every Christian believes that Jesus was a man who was a prophet, but that is not a sufficient explanation. That's like saying, yes I do believe that, but you don't know what I believe. Yes, and that's why I said it wasn't a sufficient explanation. You see, you need to listen more. That's why you don't know what Christians believe. Because you don't listen. You've got your little script that all the Dawa puppets you use. And once you've used your script, you're out of bullets. You know, every time you say this, I remember the words in my head. They tried to extinguish the light of Allah with their tongues. And in Indonesia, Christianity is growing. In Iran, Christianity is growing. In Saudi Arabia, Christianity is growing. In Sudan, Christianity is growing. Christianity is growing across the Islamic world. Across the Islamic world. Across the Islamic world. Islam is rotting from within. It is rotting from within. Even your own. Even your own. Even your own, listen, even your own Dawa gang, Mahami Hijab, said that there is a tsunami of apostasy. Ali Dawa said there is a tsunami of apostasy. These are the words of your own Dai. All nice rhetoric, but doesn't deal with any of the facts. It's all nice rhetoric, but none of it deals with the facts. So, so what we've got is the fact that you believe that your God is unjust and fickle. And you believe that your God. What do I believe about my God? Yes, I do. Yeah. But here's the difference. What's the difference? I have no shame in my beliefs. He's embarrassed by his. Because in one sentence, yeah. he said that Allah was unjust, and in the next one, he took it back. Because I gave you... Listen, I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. Okay, okay. Listen, this is what happened. Okay, what happened? I gave him the same sentence, and all I did is replace one word. Repeat the sentence, Bob. The sentence was... Okay. If Allah commands you to do something, but then punishes you for doing it, is that unjust? The word that I replaced was the word Allah and I replaced it with the word government and I said if a government forces you to do something but then punishes you for doing it would that government be unjust yes or no 
Yes. 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 So there you go. Yes. You're admitting that your God is unjust. Yes. And you're hiding behind a word. All I did is replace one word in the same sentence. And in one sentence, you condemn your God. And in the next sentence, you defend your God. Come forward, Uncle. No, that's right. You don't know God. Right. You don't know God. He wants explanation for that. So, now, now, in our example, you agreed with me. You agreed with me that it would be unjust for a government to force you to do something, but then punish you for doing it. That is unjust. Agreed? Great. Now, in the Quran. Everything happens according to Allah's will, yes? Yes, what do you mean by the will? Allah's will is sovereign. Yes, but what do you mean that he's forcing us? Right, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Look fire! Look fire! What was the passage that you were debating? The one that says that even unbelief comes from fire. Yeah, sure, 10 100. 10 100. Let's look at what your Quran says. Okay, let's look at what the Quran says. Because I contend that the God of Islam and the God of Christianity, the God of Islam and the God of Christianity are different. Okay. The God of this book yeah. is a fickle and unjust God who forces you to do something, who forces you to do... Let me finish. Let me finish. We will talk. We'll do it. We will talk. I will let you speak. Let me, Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. So that the God of the Quran is a fickle and unjust God. He does what he will. But in the Bible, the God of the Bible commands that which is good because he himself is good. Okay. So there's the difference. In Islam, the will of Allah is sovereign and all powerful. And it, it is separate to anything else, above everything else. In Christianity, the will of God flows from himself, and himself is good. Look fire, sorry, look fire. Take 100. Look fire. Take 100. Go on. Go on, Uncle. Jesus, Allah, the murder that happens in the earth, is allowing it or not? By his will. He permits it in his wider will. Okay, so he's permitting something evil. Okay, so let's deal with that. Yeah, that's a good point. Let's deal with that, because it's a good counterpoint. Yeah, yeah. Good. Let's point. deal with that. He's permitting people to die of uh, cancer. He's permitting people killing each other. Let, let, let's deal with that. It's a good point. That's a good point, Uncle. It's a good point. I'm uh, commending your point. I'm commending your point. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a good point. Yes. But what I'm saying to you is that you're using a defense that is proper to the theology of Christianity, not the theology of the Quran. This is the theology. No, it's not. That's the point. No, this is the difference. This is the difference. The theology of the Bible is different from the theology of the Quran. Okay, read the reference. Listen to what the Quran actually says. Read it, Bob. No soul can believe except by the will of Allah. No soul can believe except by the will of Allah. So that means that the will of Allah is sovereign. It is above all other things. Above commendations of good and bad. This is what Allah says. This is what Allah says. And he will place doubt on those who will not understand. So Allah is responsible for people not believing. Agreed? I want to tell I want to the record is fake. You're correct, Christian. I see him on YouTube preaching to preach Jesus. I want you to record him. I want you to record this fake Christian. He tell people to believe in stupid Jesus. When did our father call his son Jesus? When did our father call his son Jesus? Show me another yeah? Whatever you will is by the will of God. That confirms my argument. It doesn't disprove it. Let me explain. 
me. Can you see? I'm talking to him. No one's talking to you. I'm talking to him. No, 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 no. Just ignore him. No, no, no. Uncle, you get these people from time to time. You just got to press on them. I see you on YouTube. I see you on YouTube. Yeah. Uncle, you just, just let me stand there. Jesus is their feet. Right, go on, Uncle. Jesus is their feet. Go on, just talk to me. Jesus is their feet. Jesus is their feet. Can you see it? Jesus is their feet. Can you see it? It explains the same thing that what you said. Thank you. Other verses. Yes. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a scholar. You know? I'm just trying to. Yes. Another person says that. If you wish as an evil man, let's say, if you are an evil man, yeah. or as evil, yeah. wishes to do something wrong, yes. Allah will make it easy for you. Okay. okay. Wait, wait. Yes. On the, on the other side, if you are a pious person and want to do something good, yeah. also Allah will make it easy for you. Can you show me That's in the Quran? That's part of You see me? Yeah, I can, I can see show me. Yeah, pull it up. Let's, let's, let's have a look at it. I can't it. remember the because, because in your, in what we've got is we, you, even one of the own verses that you gave, the one where it says, Allah will, what, what, how did you phrase it? I don't want to misquote you. Allah will something your will. Allah will make it easy. No, no, no. The, the first verse, the one that supports my argument. Which in whatever English, you will, whatever you will, yes, is by the will of Allah. It means, right, that, it means, listen, listen, wait, 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 no, 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 I, I'm speaking, I just wanted to make sure I didn't misquote you. So, even the verse that you gave states that whatever you will is by the will of Allah, and therefore, the other verse that you gave that said if you are a pious person, Allah will make it easy for you, and if you are an unrighteous righteous person, Allah will make it easy for you, still falls within the fact that both your piety and your unrighteousness are Allah's will. Which, yes, which means that it is unjust for Allah to punish you for something that He made you do. Now, if you are an evil person, and Allah makes it easy for you to kill this, let's say, this man next to you. Because he found the gun, he made it easy for you to carry the gun and kill the person, an innocent person. Yes. He made it easy. Would that be unjust? Right. Would that be unjust? Allah is unjust, yes. For, do, for, for making it easy for you. That's your will. You want to kill him. Allah's, you no, want to kill him. But your command doesn't say that. Wait, wait, wait. But you want to kill him, right? But that's that it, yes. will, I'm dealing with your argument, but that will is given to you by Allah. Of course. Of course. But he gave you both. He gave you a will to do things good. Okay. And he gave you a will to do things bad. Right, so you can understand the contrast. Could so I get some water, please? Yes, you are free. Thank you. You are free to <laughs> choose whatever you really want. Okay. I'm a prophet. So, so let me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, oh, sorry. Oh, who's this? Uh, Mike. So, so let me. Let sorry, me sorry, sorry, sorry. So, so you are free. That's freedom. You are free. That's no, no. Wait, wait, wait. First. You get. You get shot. For example, the man shot. You get Can you show me in the Quran where you got free will? Yeah. All right. So, so my point to you is, and I want to, I want to highlight the difference. Because we Christians believe in God's wider will. We believe that God, allow me to finish. I'm explaining the difference. We Christians believe in God's wider will. We believe that God, by his wider will, has given you genuine autonomy, genuine freedom of will so that you are responsible for your actions. You choose your actions. And God commands the good because he is good. Not that something is good because God commands it. Do you hear the difference? God commands that which is good because it is good, Can you see? and it is good because it is from within the nature of God. God Himself is good. Be a liar. Be a 
a liar, you're a fake Christian. You're a liar. But in you're a liar. Islam. If you don't repent, you're, you're, you're a liar, you will perish. I see you on Facebook, you're a liar. I see you on YouTube, you're a liar. Yeah? Both of you, you fake Christian. You fake Christian. Yeah? Can you see here? Can you see? Jesus is pagan. Yeah? Jesus is the son of the devil. Yeah? Can you see? Jesus is a pig. Yeah? The will of God. Yeah? The will of God. Yeah? The will of God. Yeah? Never, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. If you don't repent, you will perish. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? You should so be ashamed the of yourself. Admits you should be ashamed of yourself. You're a fake preacher. You so you yeah? A lying preacher. To you, you are here always friend. every Sunday lying. Okay. You so, yourself. Telling people to believe in stupid The young agrees. That Jesus unbelief so is a bad thing. Jesus means unbelief is a bad yes. thing. He agrees. The blood now, of Jesus is the, the blood of peace. Is, is I see him on YouTube. He's another liar. Something that Allah is a liar. He's a deceiver. He is the oh. son of the devil. He says no. He's here to deceive people. His Quran says Anyone yes. Anyone telling you to believe in Listen Jesus to what the Quran is the son says. of the devil. Anyone no telling you to believe in Jesus is a liar. Can believe. Can you show me? Except when did our father call by the will of Allah, yes. and He will place. Can you tell me? Doubt that on those, on those who will not eh? understand. You should be ashamed so the Quran, of yourself. He says yes. If you don't repent, so you, the Quran you will shock on that is water. saying that Allah is the author of unbelief. No, no. So he's now saying no, no, it isn't. Wait, wait, wait. So well, what does this verse mean? You're a liar. Okay, what does well, this verse mean? Yeah? Go, 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 He's a liar. This guy is a liar. He's a liar. Knowing what you're going to do. I'm here to accept it already. I'm just beginning. I'm here to accept it. Look at this verse. What do you mean? What do you mean? God's will is based on his knowledge. Not based on his knowledge. Uncle, I want, you, I want you to deal with this verse. I'm trying to explain to you. No, I want you to deal with what this verse means. Tell me what this verse means. When did our father call his son Jesus? will not believe, except if Allah wills. That means that you have to do... A lying Christian. No. What, what does this verse mean? When did our father call his son Jesus? It means that no person yep. can be believer yes. except when Allah allows us to have it. But, but, right. let, let me go on. But, when will Allah allow us to have it? If you don't repent, you will perish in hell. Step if you don't repent, you will perish. Read the Quran. Yeah. Do see? something that yeah. proves Jesus that you are sincere and you are. He wants the guidance. Yes. But if you don't want the guidance, you will not give it to you. Okay. That's show me. Show me in the Quran. So what we've established is that we aren't misinterpreting Surah 10, Ayah 100. It does mean. Sorry, someone's chucking crap at someone else. No, no. Once again, a Muslim is assaulting a Christian in the park. Once again, a Muslim is assaulting a Christian in the park. The Christian spit on the Muslim. Oh, you know that from here. You were looking at me the whole time. The Muslim was doing this in the face. Brother, uncle, you didn't even see the incident. I saw the incident. I saw the Muslim doing like that. And this is what we're up against. Even though the uncle didn't even see the event, he was looking at me the whole time. He's saying from this distance, he knows what happened. Guys, you've got to understand, the Muslim Ummah will always lie to the defense of the Muslim Ummah. They will work to defend. He could be sweating. He could, he chucked water on the Christian, he might have splashed back on him. 
Why you, you, how, where's your why, proof that he spat? Why is the proof that... Uh, I saw it! He choked it! I saw it with my own eyes! You were to me. No, I was looking over there. I was looking over there. The camera will show. So, what we've established is that we're not misinterpreting this verse in the Quran. Allah is responsible for unbelief. No. That's what it says here. You said so. I told you. Right, show me a verse. Show me another verse. Show me another verse. Show me. Show me a verse, Uncle. I know what you said. Show me a verse. Show me a verse. Wait, go on. Show me the verse. Find me the verse. Go to 55. Go to 55. Okay. I'm not sure. And what I am, Uncle? There is no compulsion in religion. Wait, wait, let, let, where, where, where is that? I'm going to show you what 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 I'm Okay. 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 Second Ali, help me. 256. Let me get Okay. I like you, Uncle. You're, you're able to have an intelligent conversation. Yeah, we love the uncle. Okay. Sura 2. 56. Okay. So, it says, Let there be no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. Whoever rejects evil and believes in Allah hath grasped the most trustworthy handhold that never breaks, and Allah heareth and knoweth all things. Brilliant. Right. So, you have not pretty much agree Go on. Right. So, so, does it not also say, in, and you could maybe help me find the surah? Is there not also a surah in the Quran where it says, and Allah opens the chest of whom he wills to receive Islam, and he closes the chest of whom as if he is ascending into the sky? Which, which surah and ayah is this? Now, just for, for the sake of those of you watching, okay, which, which is. I don't know, number, but it's 125. 125 of which uh, I am? Yeah, yeah. Right, bear with us. Six, six. Sura 6. 125. 125. Because what I want to show to you is that the theology of the Quran asserts the will of Allah as the supreme thing above everything else. It's independent of everything else. What, what, 155? 125. 125. Let me just show you. Surah 6, 125. 125. Okay. Those whom Allah willeth to guide, he openeth their breast to Islam. Those whom he willeth to leave straying unbelief, he maketh their breasts close and constricted as if they had to climb up to the skies. Thus does Allah heap the penalty on those who refuse to believe. So Allah is responsible for your belief or unbelief. After you make your choice. No, this, uh, the scripture is for. Allah says he is the one that puts yeah. doubt in your heart. Surah 10, 100. Doesn't say if you choose. Doesn't say that. Doesn't say that. Yes. Right, so that one, no compulsion. 
How do Muslims use this idea of no compulsion in religion? They're talking about the idea of putting a dagger to someone's throat and saying, accept Islam or die. That is what they mean by let there be no compulsion. That is what. Oh, so you, are you saying that I'm wrong? That Muslims are okay with putting daggers to throats and saying. Yeah, I'm saying that's forbidden in Islam. Thank you. And that's what the verse that you've read is talking about. Thank you. Yes, that's what he's talking about. By Allah's compulsion. No. Allah does not. Uh, you know, and you're contradicting your Quran. No, no, no. We are not contradicting. You're contradicting your Quran. So we are contradicting. Quran, yes. There is the sound verse. Yes. And there is uh, so verses that has many meanings. Yes. You understand? That? Yes. So I have to take the verses that have many meanings. Yes. Bring it back. Yeah, so you have to use them all. Yeah, like, so show me one verse in the Quran. Show, no one's coming. You're just a child. So, you're just a child. So, come here. Uncle, uncle, it's okay. Come here, uncle, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't repent, you will perish. If you don't repent, you will perish. The thing is, ladies and gentlemen, is every now and then, Speaker's Corner attracts people who have emotional instability. When you meet when? someone who has emotional instability like this gentleman here, you should try to meet them with patience. Try to meet them with patience. Don't fight. Don't fight. Don't fight. So, Uncle. Yeah? So, the, what are the differences between Christianity and Islam? Okay. Well, what is it? Well, I'm still waiting for a single verse that says I've got free will. Another line, Christian. Okay. Okay, now. Now. That's the one. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Thank you. Yes, now. Okay. okay, so let's talk about the difference between this guy is here. I just want to be on the Christian concept. And this guy as well. I'm not happy. This guy again. He wants to be a That's what he did. Yeah? Yeah, now. The question I have is this. So he asked me to show him where in scripture God allows people to do evil things. I'll show you very easily. It's called Genesis chapter 2. So, he said the Bible. I'm using the Bible. We believe in the Bible, so I'm using the Bible. What translation are you using, Bob? I'm using the NRSV. Thank you, Mokila. Not the best, but it's good enough. Okay. So, in the book of Genesis, in chapter 3, it states, reading from verse 8. Okay. No, sorry, I'm going to read from verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that Yahweh God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say to you, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of, your, eat of it, your eyes will be opened, that you will be like God, knowing good and evil. 
So then, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eye, and that the tree was to be desired, that's the key word, to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Now let me expose it. Adam and Eve, let me expose it, the significance of what you've just heard. Christians believe that will and desire are intrinsically connected. We don't believe that free will is this free-floating thing separate from context. Will is rooted in nature. Will is rooted in the passions, the desires. This is why Christ at the Garden of God gets enemy. Though he himself was God, and you also asked me for the New Testament, he fell to his face and he said, not my will, but thine be done. Why did he say this? Because the divine will had to translate through human will, and human will is rooted in desire. God's will is rooted in the character and nature of God. God is good, therefore he wills what is good. In Islam, in his, one second, in Islam, what is good is good because Allah wills it. So when Allah wills that you have unbelief, that is good because it's Allah's will. So, right, reply. Yeah. Yes. 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 No, of course not. Of course not. But her her choice was rooted in her nature. Remember that passage. Listen, listen, listen. You will not die. So when the woman saw, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eye, and that the tree was to be desired. So the act of rebellion came from the woman. But your Quran is saying that I don't believe because Allah makes me not believe. We started on the Quran. Yeah. Yes. No, of course. Yes. She desired it for wisdom. Yes. 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 No, hold on one second. Because for, so so here's here's the thing. That the topic of what God wants for the woman is irrelevant to the question that we're talking about. But I will entertain it because you've been so charitable to entertain my questions. So God forbade this knowledge of, of good and evil to preserve the original innocence of the human species. If the human species is innocent of the knowledge of good and evil, they are essentially children in the world. And children are not guilty of crime because children are innocent of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why we have the idea of legal culpability. Because at a certain point we deem that someone should know better. That is why God didn't want Adam and Eve to eat of the knowledge of good and evil because they would then be culpable for the evil that they do. However, wait one second, no, uncle, uncle, the topic we're talking about, the topic we're talking about is the fact that in the Christian faith, God wills what is good because he himself is good. In Islam, 
God wills what he wants because he is the master and the king and he can do whatever he wants. Is that fair? So Allah's will is constrained by what? Yeah, but wait, no, don't get off the topic, though. But don't get off the topic. Don't get off the topic, Uncle. No, not your topic. The topic you jumped into the conversation <laughs> over there. Yeah. About my topic? Yes. 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 So, yes. 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 Okay, so let's deal with this question. But I want you to notice. Why are you. No, Uncle, I'm going to answer your question. Uncle, you're trying to get off the topic. The difference is that I showed the Uncle and he agreed on camera. He agreed on camera that Allah commands disbelief. That people believe, and I'll show them the verse again because you're denying it. Let's look at what the Quran says. Let's no, it doesn't say that. Let's look at let what. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Listen to this is what Muslims who do dawah. Allah, but believe is evil in Islam. I'm just going to do a quick walk around. Apparently, there's a, uh, some sort of cycling event uh, on Oxford Street. I could hear the drums as well, so I might go over there. Uh, possibly cut speakers corner short today and just see what's going on over there. Louis! Okay, how are you? How are you? How's it going? Uh, yeah. Uh, apparently there's a cycling thing. There's a one on the street. What's uh, that? A cycling event. Oh. Which I might go cover, I don't know. I've seen a few. Yeah. Um, yeah, most if, if, yeah, if you realise it. If you know that's on the street, so I think they're like around, around the area. Yeah, demo was just a cycling thing. I've, I've, I've just come here and it's so really? boring. Yeah. It's boring. Yeah. I don't know why I different. rushed here. I rushed here yeah. 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 for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely boring. Yeah. Like it would have been there. Oh, look what my doctor told me the print. Oh. <laughs> my, my doctor told me the print. Because <laughs> my doctor's anti vaccine yeah. That's very good.
I'm just going to pause the stream uh, for a bit. I'll be back in like uh, five minutes. Uh, just bear with. Okay, so apparently there's some sort of uh, cycling event on Oxford Street. I might go there, cover that, and cut Speaker's Corner, uh, speakers corner short today. I uh, hope you all enjoyed. Uh, thanks to all the mods uh, keeping the chat clean. Also, thanks to those who've donated. Remember to subscribe, click the bell icon so you don't miss uh, future live streams or videos. I'll be live again uh, later on today in like a couple minutes for the cycling event which is on Oxford Street so stay tuned for that so I'll be live again so uh, see you on the other side I think Immy's there so I'll just go see him there as well and yeah